Today, I am sharing with everyone that when we bring up the four words smoking and drinking, what comes to your mind? Perhaps the first thing we think of is not these substances themselves, but men. A man with a cigarette in his left hand and a bottle in his right hand. Why does this image appear in our minds? Because in today's society, smoking and drinking seem to have become standard for men. Where there are men, there will be a lot of smoking and drinking, and where there is smoking and drinking, naturally, there will be men. This situation has created a habitual way of thinking for most of us, and this habitual thinking tells us that men all like to drink and smoke. However, since there are men who like to smoke and drink in life, there are definitely men who do not like to smoke and drink. So what kind of people are the latter? When many people see men who do not smoke or drink, they feel very surprised. What is so different about these men compared to ordinary men? Actually, although the number of men who do not smoke or drink is not large, 8 or 9 out of 10 of them are these four kinds of people. 1. Habitually self-disciplined Why do most men get into smoking and drinking? Online surveys show that some people choose smoking and drinking out of vanity. Some choose it to follow the crowd and look cool, and some continue to stick with smoking and drinking after trying it once because they can't control themselves. Actually, smoking and drinking can be quit, but why do so many people find it hard to quit? A big part of the reason is that they are not self-disciplined enough. A sufficiently self-disciplined man realizes the harm of smoking and drinking from the beginning and never gets involved with them. No matter what situation they are in, they will control their curiosity. Even if a sufficiently self-disciplined man starts smoking and drinking, he will eventually rely on his willpower to forcefully separate himself from smoking and drinking and not be influenced by them. Former Singapore Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew used to smoke one cigarette after another. Later, to successfully launch the smoke-free nation movement, he set an example by quitting smoking. His strong sense of responsibility to the country enabled him to overcome his long-standing habit. Quitting smoking also further enhanced his political prestige and allowed him to live to the age of 91. Self-disciplined men are often the most formidable because they know what to stick to and what not to stick to. This rational analysis and persistence are key factors for them to overcome difficulties and achieve success. 2. Knowing how to take responsibility for themselves. We have discovered such a phenomenon. With the changes in the current environment and the increasing work pressure, it seems that people of a certain age are in a sub-healthy state. Especially some middle-aged people, they face a lot of pressure, so they have to use smoking and drinking to divert their attention and eliminate some of their troubles. But smoking and drinking have a characteristic, which is that they are harmful to the body. But why do people keep trying it even though they know it's harmful? Maybe they deliberately avoid thinking about this issue, or maybe they don't have a heart that takes responsibility for themselves and their families. On the contrary, we can find that those men who don't smoke or drink might be particularly uninteresting, but they will take responsibility for their bodies and not allow their health to be harmed in any way. This responsibility is not just for themselves, but also for their families. Because in this society, if a person's health collapses, in the end, they will not only lose both health and wealth, but also burden their families. Karl Marx, due to long-term desk research and writing, made smoking one of his hobbies. He smoked fast and a lot, even chewing half of the cigarettes in his mouth. During his exile in Paris and London, living in poverty and relying on lamps, cigars were still an indispensable necessity for him. Anyone who saw Marx always saw him with a pipe or cigar in his mouth. To complete the writing of Das Kapital as soon as possible, Marx worked day and night, and his smoking naturally increased. He once lamented to his student and son-in-law, Paul Lafargue, the founder of the French Workers' Party, that the ugly manuscript of Das Kapital was not even enough to pay for the cigars smoked during its writing. In his later years, due to extreme financial difficulty, he switched to cheap tobacco and humorously told his friends that the more he smoked, the more he saved. Due to long-term extreme fatigue and heavy smoking of inferior tobacco, 
Marx's health seriously deteriorated. His cough made people feel that such a broad-shouldered and strong person seemed to be about to break apart. In his fifties, doctors prohibited him from smoking. For Marx, who was deeply attached to tobacco, quitting smoking undoubtedly meant a sacrifice. But a large amount of work awaited him, and without a healthy body, he was powerless to complete it. Marx resolutely quit the smoking habit he had been addicted to for decades. When his friend Lesnar visited him, Marx, childishly happy and proud, said that he had not smoked for many days and would never smoke again as long as the doctor forbade it. In the end, even Marx himself could hardly believe that he could completely quit smoking. 3. Particularly Principled When we evaluate a person, we usually assess whether they are principled and whether they have a bottom line. So how would you evaluate a man who doesn't smoke or drink? Actually, many men who don't smoke or drink are principled. Just like a person I met before, whether he was meeting clients or attending social events, he generally wouldn't smoke or drink with others. Some people were puzzled and asked him, in such situations, don't you feel conspicuous or out of place if you don't accompany others in smoking and drinking? How did he answer? People cooperate with you because of your strength, not how much you can smoke or drink. Smoking and drinking are just social tools. Can one not live without smoking and drinking? These words reflect that this person is very principled. In a broader sense, why do some men not smoke or drink? Obviously, it's because they stick to their bottom line and principles and don't want to go against their inner wishes. I really like Chapman's words, neither the songs of beautiful women nor the barking of hunting dogs, neither the tears of crocodiles nor the howling of wolves can shake me. Principles are like a wall behind a person, able to timely block one's retreating steps. When you constantly tear down this wall, you are constantly retreating. Unprincipled people spend their lives in retreat, never refusing or resisting things they dislike based on their own will, and are always swayed by the outside world. In my eyes, principles are not complicated rules. They are about not compromising without limits, not easily giving in for the sake of face, and not changing one's original intentions for profit. Because this world is made up of two parts, self and the external world. Without a strong self-will, one will only be swallowed by the outside world. 4. Particularly calm and steady in conduct. Men who don't smoke or drink often seem very solitary, lacking the interests typical of ordinary men. Therefore, these people generally are not very social. But the less social they are, the more time they have to think about their lives and future directions. They are also more able to calmly face the harsh realities of life. To many people, drinking and smoking seem to dispel worries. The saying a thousand worries resolved by getting drunk is what many people think. But in the eyes of those who don't smoke or drink, drinking doesn't solve worries. In the end, it only adds to the sorrow. Thus, men who like to drink and smoke are a bit more emotional and show their true selves to others while the latter are a bit more rational and less willing to reveal their true selves. During the Three Kingdoms period, Zhang Fei fought to avenge Guan Yu by personally donning armor to campaign against Eastern Wu. However, the battles did not go smoothly. Extremely troubled, he could only drown his sorrows in wine. When Zhang Fei drank, he would beat people. His subordinates, Fan Jiang and Zhang De, were often beaten by him. Since Zhang Fei only knew how to fight and not how to treat people, the two could no longer endure his beatings. After Zhang Fei got drunk, they killed him and defected to Eastern Wu. Zhang Fei was originally a rough butcher, deeply loyal to his brothers, but unfulfilled revenge weighed heavily on his heart. He punished his subordinates in a drunken rage, which ultimately led to his death. The more unassuming and unnoticed a person is, the more calm and composed they are, not acting emotionally over some problems. They think through everything with a rational mind. I believe that no matter what type of person one is, for the sake of their health, it is better to smoke and drink less. 
Not smoking and not drinking is a long-term strategy. People are not children anymore and must learn to shoulder their own responsibilities and face the real situation. That's all for today's sharing. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the Buddhist Zen Wishdom, don't forget to subscribe. We look forward to your comments and shares. You will never be alone here.